good afternoon everyone please be seated students at the back we'll start within a minute now Good afternoon, everyone. We welcome you all to the distinguished public lecture, Chai and Challenges, a samvad by Justice Swarnikant Sharma. Justice Swarnikant Sharma's journey has been nothing short of a remarkable. Graduating with honors in English literature from Delhi University, where she was adjudged the best student all rounder of the year by Dolat Ram College, she pursued her L she pursued her law, LLB. LLB degree in 1991 from Delhi University and LLM in year 2004 with a keen intellect and unwavering dedication she began her illustrious career as a magistrate at the young age of 24 rising to become a session judge on her 35th birthday justice sharma's judicial excellence extends beyond the courtrooms and trained as a judicial mediator she has skillfully resolved numerous cases through mediation She has also remained as a chairperson of the committee to examine the complaints of sexual harassment against women of empl women employees of different district courts in Delhi at different point of times throughout her tenure in Delhi district courts justice sharma has presided over a diverse area of civil and criminal matters including posting as a special judge cbi and principal judge of family court in november 2019 she was appointed as a principal district and session judge and later in march 2022 she took charge as a principal district special sp principal district and session judge come special judge cbi at rouse venue court she has also authored several book for the benefit of public at large her first book don't break after breakup aims to help women who have chosen to remain single or who have undergone a violent breakup of a marriage or a relationship second one which is beyond bagman addresses the possible emotional and financial problem that the senior citizens may face at the hands of their children her third book tumhari sakhi is an attempt to create awareness amongst women about their rights and the need to speak speak up about the violence that are, that they are facing she has also made an attempt at the fiction with her book love full circle elevated to the esteem position of the high court judge on 28th march 2022 Justice Sharma has left no opportunity in leaving an indelible mark on legal and judicial landscape of our country. She was assigned the criminal roster in Delhi High Court on 18th May 2022 and was later on entrusted with the responsibility of adjudicating criminal cases involving sitting and former MPs and MLAs. Since her elevation, Justice Sharma has delivered about 500 reported judgments in criminal law. Notable among her landmark judgments are ruling that strike down archaic practices like virginity test and provide crucial guidelines for sensitive matters such as medical termination of pregnancy for rape victims her dedication to ensuring the well-being of prisoners advocating for the rights of persons with disabilities laying guidelines for drafting mediated mediated settlements agreements in matrimonial disputes and emphasizing need for regulation of content with vulgarity and obscenity on ott platforms addressing upon upcoming challenges in cyberspace and fostering balanced approaches to sensitive issues like adolescent love and sexual assault recognized for her exceptional contribution justice Sar sharma's judgments have been significant has gained significant attention with 25 of them featuring in live laws 100 most important judgments of delhi high court for the year 2023 which is highest for any sitting judge in delhi high court most recently On International Women's Day, Justice Swarnakanta Sharma was honored as one of the titans of the bench in BW Legal's World World's 100 Most Influential Women in Law in 2024 list. A testament to her journey of 32 years of age, 32 years of as a judge. We also have with us Professor Manya Pundeer, who's assistant professor and program head. Now I'd like to request Justice Swarnakant Sharma to address the audience.
so good afternoon all of you uh, we are sorry we are starting a little late because uh, we were struck in a traffic jam i do not know whether the kind words which have been spoken by me by them about me i was relieved i didn't know whether it is me i am a very ordinary woman who has been raised by very special people and when i stand before you and whatever has been said about me i owe this to my parents when i was asked to come here i was wondering what the new generation wants to hear i do not know what kind of image you will have of a high court judge and whether i am really uh, i fulfill that image the image that you normally have that you see in the films or otherwise so i was just thinking that uh, which topics i should touch that will be useful for you that you may like to hear so i asked my children and i asked my law researchers who are also like my children and then we decided that we should speak about cyber space we should talk about the sexual harassment we should talk about whether the equality laws that we have for women even today they are relevant or not and we should also talk about some of my judgments that you may like to speak to me about i think uh, whenever i have gone to deliver my lectures at many places people have this uh, uh, this grievance that you know uh, there are there are very few platforms where they can speak and interact with sitting judges you read our judgments but we don't you don't know us so you don't know what goes behind writing of those judgments when you are reading those judgments at times you are judging us also and irrespective of the trolls and the abuses that uh, you know i have to face uh, while i have passed lot of judgments irrespective of that there is whole lot of uh, hard work that goes behind it today when i stand before you i would want not it to be a one way traffic where i will be only telling you about certain things i want you to ask me certain things because there is there are uh, very few occasions when you will have people before you who you want to interact with and who are available to you so we will start that session in a while but before that i just want to tell you that when i have interns coming to my court when i have junior lawyers coming to my court and i think many of you will one day start coming to the courts what you while you are studying in your universities should concentrate at i do not know whether you are taught that or not since when you arrive at the practical part of any court of law i think you find that maine to jo padha tha ye wo to hai hi nahi right aisa hota hai जब आप कोर्ट में आते हैं ना तो जज वैसा लगता है ना तो वकील वैसा लगता है ना तो फाइल वैसी लगती है ना तो आर्ग्यूमेंट वैसा लगता है सो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू विल अग्री विद व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इफ यू हैव बीन टू द कोर्ट्स हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव बीन टू द कोर्ट्स हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू ओ ऑलमोस्ट एवरीबडी सो वॉट यू थिंक आपको ऐसा लगता है कि जो आपने सोचा था कि कोर्ट ऐसा होता है जज ऐसा होता है और जज जो वहाँ पर प्रोसीडिंग्स ऐसी होती है आपको आप में से कितने लोगों को ऐसे लगा कि ये तो कुछ भी नहीं है ऐसा how many of you felt that how many of you felt that very few i am surprised because when i went there i thought that you know it was so different and you know when i became a judge then people will come to my court and say oh my god ye kar legi kuch faisla types right so when you have entered into courts of law tell me how many of you have felt ki jo maine padha tha whatever i have studied in my course law in the university that is going to be of use to me How many of you think कि मैं जैसे ही एल एल बी खत्म कर लूंगा तो मैं किसी भी कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ में खड़ा हो जाऊंगा एंड आई विल स्टार्ट आर्ग्यूइंग डू यू थिंक दर इज एनी ऑफ यू थिंक्स दट आई विल फिनिश आई विल गेट अ डिग्री एंड आई विल स्टार्ट गोइंग टू अ कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ एंड आई स्टार्ट आर्ग्यूइंग इज दर एनी वन इन दिस एंटायर हॉल हु थिंग्स लाइक दैट नो दर इज नॉन एंड दैट इज वॉट द पॉइंट दट आई वॉन्ट टू मेक दैट मीन्स दैट आई वॉज राइट सो दिस इज वाई टूडे आई एम हेयर टू टेल यू दैट वाई यू आर कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ऑन योर लॉ बुक्स when you are studying law when you are being taught law also concentrate on the procedural law do you understand what i am saying because when you will come to the court 
you know why are we studying law many of us we want to be judges many of us we want to be lawyers many of us we want to do many other things but the main aim is that you know this is going to be something which is going to be your life like you know you are going to earn by it so if you want to earn by it and you want to establish yourself is a in a profession then only reading the books is not going to help you what you should also be concentrating is on the procedural aspect of law i do not know how many of you have earlier heard it or not but i would suggest to you that whenever you get time and you are able to watch the court proceedings if you want to establish yourself as lawyers then please watch the proceedings please watch the proceedings because when you will start watching the proceedings you will know how a court of law works you will know how a lawyer addresses the judges you will know how the judges react to an argument as far as i i it is very heartening to see a majority in this hall room of girls you know who are sitting here it is very heartening because when i was doing law i think there were very few of us who were allowed to be lawyers who were allowed to be lawyers and i'm underlying and i am putting my em emphasis on allowed to be lawyers so consider yourself lucky that your families have sent you here in one of the best universities that we have on law and you are studying law the second thing is how many of you think that when when we talk about cyber law uh how many of you are able to think of dark web how many of you cyber fraud when i talk about cyber crime does any image of any small unknown offense come to your mind probably not maybe not i do not know maybe you are not conveying but then since we have little time i will tell you when we talk about cyber law we always have a picture as if there is a fraud there is hacking there is a dark web there are so many other things which are happening which you are aware of what you do not know and which you will have to encounter when you become judges or lawyers is as to how this small piece of device that we have how dangerous it is and how many people how many youngsters are in jails because of this small device that we have so when we are concentrating and you are concentrating solely on those cyber crimes which are bigger you forget that we have whatsapp then we have internet where you are posting pictures where you are sending messages where you are using it for many other purposes which lands people into trouble a small message through whatsapp can land you in trouble and how the youngsters who are using this small device they are landing up in jails when i wrote my judgment of adolescent love that was what i was talking about my point is if you are thinking as to why i am saying this my point is this that when you become lawyers or you become judges then don't always think of bigger things because smaller things in law matter a lot than bigger sorry than bigger things for example those uh, those children or those teenagers who are using this device for sending messages or using inappropriate photographs of their girlfriends or boyfriends or doing such things which you may read on day to day basis in the newspapers you know those are also small things that you need to concentrate on when you are studying law so do not concentrate only on the bigger things there are smaller things which are waiting for you to be contested when you become lawyers and judges there is another aspect that i wanted to highlight here we always think of uh you know there are we we teach people of good touch bad touch we have not taught people of virtual touch which is a new thing which is a new phrase which has been coined by me in one of my judgments where we are talking that there is something called virtual judge virtual touch virtual touch is when you are reaching people or your prospective victim only through cyberspace my point 
uh, when I end this topic of cyber is that if you want to become an established lawyer or if you want to establish yourself practically, you have to concentrate not only on the bigger aspects of the challenges of an offense or the law that you have, but also on the smaller aspects of it. There's another thing that I wanted to tell you that when you are studying law, you should get out of your classrooms. Get out of your classrooms. And how will you get out of your classrooms? Whenever you get time, go to those courts of law where you can see the procedural happenings. If you will not do that, after finishing your law, you will find yourself exactly at the place where you found yourself when you started doing law. So you should get out and get some practical training when you are doing law. There's another aspect of it that law actually gives you a lot of authority. And when you will become a lawyer and you will get the robes, when you will get the robes, you know, robes give you a lot of authority. Robes give you, give you that power where you will be able to get constitutional rights of people uh, in a court of law. That is a very big responsibility that you have. So when you are doing law at that time itself, please ensure that you have that humility, that you have that kindness, that you have that sensitivity when you are studying law to deal with those who will become your prospective clients. Now I am open to any questions that you have and anything that you would want to ask me. You can ask me anything that you want to. I will be very happy to answer anything and it doesn't have to be related only to the law you can ask me anything that comes to your mind when you <coughs> i'm sorry anything that comes to your mind when you see a judge before you when you see a judge before you there are so many things which you want to ask yourself when you are reading judgments or you're reading law you can ask me anything that comes to your mind because these opportunities are seldom so we can start the questions i can stand here and i can answer <laughs> Can we, is it possible if we do the question and answer session at the end or would you like to have it now, ma'am? Anything, yeah. whichever way it's, uh, yeah. it's Then can I take the liberty of starting the questions and just having a discussion with ma'am Sudhari so she yeah? Okay, lovely. Very supportive students, <laughs> if I may say. So, uh, Professor, I was reading about you and then, you know, because you are a sitting judge at the Delhi High Court and because Delhi is so politically active, and because, of course, it's the Delhi High Court that we say, nowadays a lot of amplified attention is given to criminal cases against politicians. So when you are presiding over the benches that have criminal cases against, say, MPs, politicians, or famous political figure, how do you ideally deal with the pressure that you have internal, external, in court, because they they, it can sometimes no offense to you, but it can be quite intimidating for no matter what power you hold. So how do you deal with such pressure? It is. So uh, the answer to this lies in this that uh, I became a judge when I was only 24. So I have been dealing with this pressure since I was 24, so probably I am now pressure proof. When I became a high court judge, uh, the responsibilities are higher and of course, as you say, that political figures and deciding their cases may to the outsiders look very intimidating because to you, they are politicians. To you, they are public figures. To you, they are something. As far as a judge is concerned, for a judge, they are a party before me. So I have never in my life ever felt any kind of pressure and no one has actually pressurized me also i have never felt intimidated by anything and i think it's only when you are true to what you are doing to yourself you are honest and you treat people equally you know what what does the constitution say what are you studying uh, now when you are studying law ek hi cheez to hum bar bar padhte hain na kanoon ke samne sabhi barabar hain kanoon ke samne sabhi barabar hain तो कानून के सामने अगर सभी बराबर हैं तो चाहे वो फिर पॉलिटिशियन हो और चाहे वो कोई भी हो इट डजेंट रियली मैटर सो 
they can ask me any question from Poxo to Pakistan. It doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't intimidate me at all. Because they are another party before me, whether they have 10 millions or they have 10 paisa. doesn't matter to me at all. That's, that's a great answer, ma'am. More power to you and the tribe that follows you. So that's something for our young students to learn from. Yeah, don't pull that on us, yes, <laughs> while we're taking the classes. The next question that you very, I mean, that I have that you've just discussed is about virtual touch, like how we've discussed bad touch, good touch, and virtual touch. Nowadays, there are new plethora of crimes that come through cybercrime. And because our laws will now, we have new criminal laws that are to come from July now that are to be implemented. They also have, I mean, they are touching upon cyber crimes, but they are not full, fully equipped yet to deal with this. So what are the challenges that you, as a presiding high court judge, face in dealing with cyber crimes? And what are the suggestions that you would want to, or you, that comes into your mind when you hear the term cyber crimes that right. we talk of? So I think when I was interacting with you, I chose this topic of virtual space. And I, deliberately I said, good touch, bad touch, but nobody's talking about the virtual touch. And how is it that many people are touching lives of people by virtual touches? We are, when we are sitting in uh, such air-conditioned halls, I think we are not aware as to what a person who's living in a village or who is uh, a school dropout and who is a cyber illiterate person who is using this small device, which I said is so, uh, dangerous, how they can land them in trouble. So I think when you are a judge, I came across to this, like what I said to you, that it is not the bigger things which are bothering me. Because you see, those who commit bigger crimes, they have bigger lawyers also. Those who have, who are uh, illiterate, cyber Ill Ill illiterate, you know, number one, they will be not very educated, but they are using this space. For example, let me give you an example. Somebody has fallen in love with somebody and everybody, every day, this moment when we are talking to each other, somebody is falling in love with somebody and telling other, each other, I love you and this and that, right? So we are, every second moment, somebody is taking a selfie, somebody is taking a, uh, while we are talking to each other, somebody is taking a selfie, somebody is taking a video, somebody is professing love by taking, making a video. And that is what lands you in trouble. Because when you fight with each other, when you fight with each other, I know it's not that ki aaj pyaar ho gaya to wo saath janam wala to abhi chal hi nahi raha hai kahin par bhi. Kahin nahi chal raha hai. To jab kahin nahi chal raha hai, to jo saath din mein jo pyaar khatam ho raha hai, to jo aapne saath photograph liya hai na, wo aap usko kam se kam sattar baar ab kahin post karte hai. Jab aap usko sattar baar kahin post karte hai, to kahin na kahin, then they lodge a complaint against you and then you are caught. And this is what I want to tell all of you also. Even we may think ki hum bahut hi literate hai. हम बहुत अच्छी यूनिवर्सिटी में पढ़ते हैं हमें सब कुछ पता है बट जो दी स्मॉल थिंग्स यू शुड नो दैट पोस्टिंग अ पिक्चर ऑफ समबडी समवेयर हाउ इट कैन लैंड यू इन ट्रबल हाउ इट कैन लैंड यू इन ट्रबल सो आई थिंक दिस इज व्हाट बॉदर्स मी द द इलिटरेसी ऑफ द मासेस एज फार एज साइबर क्राइम जिसको वो बहुत ही छोटी सी चीज समझते हैं दैट कैन बिकम अ साइबर क्राइम पोस्टिंग समबडीज पिक्चर समवेयर साइबर क्राइम सेंडिंग अ मैसेज साइबर क्राइम स्टॉकिंग आई लव यू आई लव यू आई लाइक यू यूर ब्यूटिफुल आर एंड इट्स नॉट दैट ओनली मेन आर स्टॉकिंग वेमेन इवन वेमेन आर डूइंग दैट सो यू नो दोज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दोज आर ऑल्सो दोज आर ऑल्सो क्राइम्स विच वी नीड टू बी अवेयर ऑफ एंड to say that only the janta is illiterate and the lawyers know everything and the judges know everything is also incorrect so this is why my emphasis that when you are becoming prospective lawyers you will become teachers you will go to many places where you will teach people in the legal literacy programs then please go and tell this to all those who matter all those who do not have this privilege of going to the schools and colleges as to how these small, small things matter. And then my emphasis is also on legal education for the judges, judicial education for the judges. Because judges are not know all, all the time. We need to know, we need to learn. And what is more important for all of us is, we all tell learn और जजेस जो है वो अब जैसे मुझे अपना कॉलेज छोड़े हुए तो कितने साल हुए होंगे 91 सो so 91 से आज तक अभी कितनी कुछ हो गए तो अगर मैं 91 के बाद ये कह दूं कि मैं जज बन गई हूं और मुझे सब कुछ आता है तो आई थिंक दैट स्टॉप्स माय जर्नी दैट स्टॉप्स माय ग्रोथ एंड देन आई स्टॉप बिकमिंग अ गुड जज बिकॉज़ आई नो आई नीड टू एजुकेट माय सेल्फ कंटीन्यूअसली एंड सिमिलरली दिस इज वन मोर चैलेंज दैट आई थिंक वी हैव दैट जजेस नीड टू बी educated continuously 
even after they become judges because everybody cannot know everything. So cyber crimes, I think, they pose a challenge to you. Even judges need to learn it every day. Thank you very much, ma'am. I think that will be very helpful for the generation that's living and feeding off of Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. That would really help the individuals to make informed decisions. Now that we are discussing the point of cybercrime, there's another very thin line between, because there's this concept of retweeting. I'm sure all of us know it, reposting stories, taking screenshots and posting it, sharing it even after you know the original owner have, has gotten rid of it because there's a timeline to it. So in your recent judgment, you had said that even retweet can be counted as publication. So, I mean, I just want to understand that how did you come to this opinion, of course, after a lot of research that goes into it, how did you come to it that retweeting can also, you know, be connected with defamation and how people can be re held responsible? Because when we talk of retweeting, they just say that it's not our thoughts. We are just agreeing, disagreeing, or we are putting it out. So it's, it's actually quite easy for the person who's putting it out to get away with it. So when, I mean, I would just want, we would just want to hear that what you had in your mind when you were passing that judgment? So first of all, I must um, say this, that this judgment has been challenged in the Supreme Court. It is pending before the Supreme Court. So Supreme Court is yet to decide whether what I decided is right or not. So it is not my comment on anything, on the outcome. I can only, like we said, that I am here before you who wants to and if you want to know what went behind a judgment, like I say, कि आप लोगों को ऐसा लगता है कि जो जज की लाइफ होती है वो कितनी लक्जुरियस लाइफ होती है तो जज की लाइफ कभी भी लक्जुरियस लाइफ नहीं होती और जज के जो रिसर्चर और बच्चे होते हैं उनकी लाइफ तो बिल्कुल ही लक्जुरियस नहीं होती बिकॉज दे हैव टू गिव अप देअर लाइफ यू नो सो दैट यू नो वी कैन चर्न आउट सम गुड जजमेंट सो वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस जजमेंट लाइक मैनी अदर जजमेंट्स दैट वी राइट You know, there's a lot of research which goes behind it. And like I said, that, you know, when I come to this university, then I had to, I asked my children and my researchers who are also like my children, that we should say what we should say, what we should listen to, what is important for us. So when we talk about retweeting, I spoke to a lot of people about retweeting, what they think about retweeting. The judge's work is to ask the judge, to understand the judge's work, and to do the judge's work, which is what the judge's work is, which is what the judge's work is, which is what the judge's work is, within the parameters of law, as well as constitution. But as a judge, in my journey of 32 years as a judge, I have been a judge now for 32 years. So in 32 years, I have added one thing to it. And one thing to add was that when you cut yourself from masses, and when you cut yourself from practicality, then your judgments are only a piece of paper. So if you want to give a piece of paper, then you write a judgment, you sit in the air conditioned in the room, write something in the morning, write something from here, write something from there, write something from your mind, do it, but do it in terms of the parameters of law. But there is a judgment where you want that we write something from someone. हम जो लिखे हैं वो प्रैक्टिकल होना चाहिए सभी के लिए। So when we were talking about retweeting, we have to talk about it was in the context of defamation। तब कोई भी लॉ, जैसे किसी भी की लाइफ के बारे में कोई भी चीज स्टैटिक नहीं होती है। और जो भी चीज स्टैटिक होती है वो हमेशा रॉट करती है, ठीक है? वो खराब हो जाती है, वो चीज खराब हो जाती है। तो defamation का जो लॉ है, defamation का लॉ has to change. Because there is now cyberspace which we are using. So defamation, like I wrote the first line was that, you know, now it is not the whisper in the ear, ears. It is now symphony, right? So it is not that I have said that you have said that Amanya Ji, this is a big man. Now, it is not like that. Now, someone tweets and says that this is a big man. And after that, someone says that I have heard that this is a big man. So then I understood that if you do this, then you are also doing defamation. Because suppose if I want to defame you, I want to defame Amanya Ji. So I can create a fake account. I'll have zero followers and I'll say Manya, so, 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 so. And then somebody who wants to actually defame Manya, who may be more having more like, you know, presence, presence on the net, if he posts something about, retweets that. Now Manya to say uh, is defamed, right? And for the, that person who's retweeting, who's the actual person, you know, he'll get away with it. Ki to retweet kiya. So this is what I have written, and this is what went behind me, that you see the real culprit and the real victim, they should get what they should. I do not know how Supreme Court will look at it, so I can't say this is the last word, so don't start retweeting or stop retweeting, that is up to you. It is for the Supreme Court now to take a call on this, but this was my mind, you know, which went behind this. 
Now that um, that's, I mean, I hope it's it stays what the law that you have passed is becomes the law and a precedent for all of us to follow. Now that we are talking a lot about cyberspace, cybercrime, tweeting, retweeting. Now retweeting, tweeting, apart from the defamation part, a lot of times when there are high profile cases that you're dealing with, these retweets can also be judgmental in a way that this person is innocent and this person has committed the crime or these pe this particular piece of evidence should be taken in a particular way. I have students, I teach criminal law, so they, ha I mean, they already form a judgment for a particular case that's still in, you know, in motion, that as to say. So how do you disconnect yourself with such judgments that follow or how do you deal with it as a sitting judge and if, you're if at all you're you know, on that presiding bench. So th how does that come to you? Uh, first of all, when I uh, started dealing with uh, such sensitive cases, and especially these uh, cases dealing with uh, political matters, the first advice that my children gave to me was, Ki, Amma, you start, you don't ever look at the Twitter or at the social media because they are going to troll you. But you see, as a judge, uh, you have to, you should take everything in your stride. So, Though I am not on Twitter, so I will pester my law researchers ke batao kya chal rahe. Aap kabhi bhi apne aap ko kisi bhi cheez se disconnect nahi kar sakte aur aap ko kabhi bhi apne aap ko kisi cheez se disconnect nahi karna chahiye. Agar aap masses se connected nahi hai, to acha judge banna bahut mushkil hai. Now the second most important part is ki jab aap ye cheezo ko padhte hai, jab aap in cheezo ko लोगों की ओपिनियन को जानते हैं तो इट इज़ योर एक्सपीरियंस लाइक आई आई कैन टॉक अबाउट माय सेल्फ कि ये आपकी ओपिनियन है तो मेरे सामने तो बहुत सारे लॉयर्स दोनों साइड से बड़ी सारी ओपिनियंस देते हैं तो मुझे नहीं पता कि वो मेरे सामने कोर्ट में क्या कहते हैं वो तो मुझे पता चल जाता है जो कोर्ट के बाहर कहते हैं कभी कभी वो भी पता चल जाता है तो इट इज़ लाइक दैट ओनली यू सी इट डजेंट मैटर टू यू सो वॉट इज़ द क्वालिटी ऑफ अ जज द क्वालिटी ऑफ अ जज इज़ कि आप डिसपैशनेट होते हैं यू आर डिसपैशनेट आपको डिसपैशनेट होके आपको लोगों से डिटैच होके आपको सब कुछ करना पड़ता है तो इसलिए ये मैटर नहीं करता कि आप क्या सोचते हो क्या मैटर करता है कि मैं क्या सोचती हूँ और वो मैं भी क्या होता है जज के अंदर से जब मैं निकल जाती है और सिर्फ जज रह जाता है तो तभी अच्छी जजमेंट आती है जब जज के अंदर मैं रह जाएगा तो उसकी इंडिविजुअलिटी रह जाएगी तब आप कभी अच्छी जजमेंट नहीं दे सकते एंड दिस इज़ माय पर्सनल ओपिनियन तो जब भी मैं इस तरीके की चीज़ों को पढ़ती हूँ तो आई टेक आउट दैट मैं फ्रॉम द जज दैट आई एम एंड वेन एवर आई सिट ऑन द चेयर आई थिंक इट इज़ ऑटोमेटिक दैट यू नो आई एम नॉट द सेम पर्सन दैट यू सी Uh, you see me like I'm not like this. When I sit on that chair, there is something on that. You know, there is something. I am not God. Judges are not God. I don't consider they are God, right? I am not God. हम सब humans होते हैं. मगर जब आप एक oath लेते तो एक oath जो है ना वो आपके अंदर absorb होती है. आप जब इतने सालों तक आप ये काम करते हैं तो आपके अंदर कई सारी चीजें lot of things you know there are lot of changes जो आप में आते हैं. तो वो ही आपको guide करते हैं कि आप जो मर्जी आपके बोलने से तो कुछ नहीं होता तो कोर्ट में तो बहुत लोग बहुत कुछ बोलते हैं तो अगर किसी ने मुझे गालियाँ भी दे दी हैं या मुझे कुछ भी कह दिया है कि मैं एंशियंट हूँ मैं 1857 की हूँ मैं मैंने ये गलत किया है या मैं ये हो जाऊँगी तो मुझे कुछ भी फ़र्क नहीं पड़ता और क्योंकि मुझे कुछ भी फ़र्क नहीं पड़ता दैट्स वाई एम एबल टू राइट वॉट आई एम एबल टू राइट दैट्स वेरी इंसाइटफुल आई थिंक फॉर आर जनरेशन ऑल्सो बिकॉज देर आर quotes like ignorance is bliss and there's a one that's very trending now delulu sululu right Del delusion is the only solution that comes so i think that the point that you've made that cutting yourself off or discon being disconnected with something is not a solution and especially in our profession of lawyers we cannot claim ignorance and we have to know so that's that's very insightful now my last question because i think i've asked many to plenty so i think my last question would be in your recent judgments you've been using the term bharat instead of india is there any special reason for such terminology that you would want to share with us thank you for asking me that question i think many people have not asked me this question because they thought they cannot ask ask me is question ke badle mein mera question aapne kaha kyun maine pucha kyun nahi to aap bataiye kyun nahi हमारा खुद का कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ये बोलता है ना आर्टिकल वन इंडिया दैट इज़ भारत तो अगर मैं भारत यूज़ करती हूँ तो उसमें क्या क्या दिस नथिंग रॉन्ग विद इट दिस इज़ माय ओन परसेप्शन 
this is my own um, uh, opinion and this is my own very strong opinion ki agar mera constitution mujhe ye authorize karta hai that i sh- i can call it bharat aur mujhe bharat kehna acha lagta hai to main apne judgment mein bhi bharat likh sakti hu just because some persons in the audience or some people may troll me or some people may say something to me to main jo mujhe जैसे आपको अधिकार है ना सबको एवरीबडी हैज़ अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल राइट तो जजेस के भी तो कोई कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल राइट विद इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन होते हैं तो मेरा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल राइट एज अ जज ये भी है कि मुझे जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल राइट दिया मैं तो उसको एक्सरसाइज करूँगी तो मैंने उसको एक्सरसाइज कर लिया तो आर्टिकल वन ने मुझे बोल दिया हाँ जी यूज़ कर लो तो मैंने कर लिया अब मुझे अगर कोई ये कहेगा कि मत करो तो मेरे तो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल राइट है वो तो इन्फ्रिंज होता है तो मैं तो तब भी यूज़ करूँगी तो मेरे को अच्छा लग रहा है यूज़ करना तो मैं उसको हमेशा यूज़ करूँगी I'll use it always. And Bharat sounds good, no? आप लोगों को नहीं लगता अच्छा मेरा भारत महान तो मुझे अच्छा लग रहा है मुझे जजमेंट में लिखना भी अच्छा लग रहा है सो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू अग्री विद मे विद दिस राइट सो मेजोरिटी ऑफ एव मेजोरिटी यस लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू मोर भारत जजमेंट्स एज वी से और राइट आई थिंक इफ यूर ओके कैन वी ओपन द स्टेज नाउ टू द क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर बाई द स्टूडेंट्स यस और राइट वी हैव अ फर्स्ट वन इज बिन वेटिंग फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम थैंक यू फॉर वेटिंग पेशेंटली वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू यू मैम So now my question is that when considering the fact that justices are not just justices but individuals as well so while you're writing judgments do you, do you ever face a dilemma between the statutory framework you have to work in and your own moral principles so do you ever face a d- dilemma in that i think my uh, thank you for asking this question you see uh, one of my uh, tumne question pe answer itni taaliyan bajayi hain answer mein to ek bhi nahi bajayi thi kisi ne Oh, what is this? That is being unfair. Okay, so uh, jokes apart. You see, I think my previous um, uh, answer answers these two. But ये question जब मैं judge नहीं थी तो ये question मुझे भी आता था कि जो judges जो कुछ भी लिखते हैं ना उन्हें जो खुद को अच्छा लगता है ना वो वो लिखते हैं. And people may feel that how we have grown up, how we have been raised. the environments in which we have been raised you know that decides our judgments i don't think that is true when i wrote my ott judgment though i have been asked not to touch that judgment that's a very very sensitive topic for the uh, for everybody but in that i wrote and there were there was a consent judgment that i wrote in which i said a judge has no right to impose his or her own morality on the masses because i may have my own set of morality because i have been raised as an individual by a family in a set of circumstances but when you become a judge and when you sit on that chair you are no more an individual you are a judge and who is a judge a judge is one who has to work within the framework of law within the framework of constitution and what is good for the society the judges cannot disconnect themselves from the masses so therefore the judges should know they should know it is my morality but somebody else may not agree with it and this is what i write in my judgment also wrote in my judgment also you may agree with something that you want to see i may not agree with it but i'll better keep it with myself i will only say what is permissible within the constitutional limits that आर गवर्न विद विच आई एम गवर्न यू नो हु जजेस कौन है जजेस को कोई डिवाइन पावर थोड़े ना है जजेस कोई मैंने क्या बोला जजेस तो भगवान थोड़ी हैं जजेस को कोई डिवाइन पावर नहीं होती है जजेस की पावर कहाँ से आती है जजेस की पावर तो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से आती है तो जजेस की पावर जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से आती है वो आपको एक सेट पैरामीटर्स में काम करने के लिए करती कहती है और आप क्योंकि अच्छी जजमेंट लिखना चाहते हो तो एट दैट टाइम यू राइट अ जजमेंट्स विच विल विच विल बी प्रैक्टिकल फॉर मासेस तो तुम अपनी मोरालिटी कभी भी किसी भी जजमेंट में यू नेवर एवर इम्पोज दैट एज फार एज द डायलेमा दैट यू आर सेइंग दैट डायलेमा आप में आपको कभी तक भी होता होगा कि ये गलत है ये सही है आई वॉन्ट टू नरेट वन इंसिडेंट टू यू वेन आई वॉज अ यंग जज एंड वंस अपॉन अ टाइम आई वॉज यंग so when i was a young judge uh, red light area i do not know why it is called red light area kabhi i think mauka milega to us pe bhi zarur likhungi so there were some girls who were uh, uh, human trafficking and then prostitution they were brought to the 
GB Road area of Delhi. So then they were, when these girls were rescued, when these girls were rescued, they were brought before me. So the person who was running that, um, it is in common parlance, whatever is called, I would want, don't would want to use that. So they were all brought before me. So I, as a young judge who was a new, I think my, it was my first day as a, uh, pardon me because I have an injury in my leg, so I'm a little uncomfortable. Uh, I think uh, when they brought those girls before me, it was my first day as a session judge. So we have made a sex worker एक इमेज बनाई हुई है ना हमने कि as if जो सेक्स वर्कर हैं वो बुरे होते हैं और जो सेक्स वर्कर के पास जाते हैं वो बड़े मॉरली हाई होते हैं उनके मॉरल हाई होते हैं यानी कि जो औरतों के पास जाता है इन चीजों के लिए वो उसके मॉरल बड़े अच्छे होते हैं मगर जो एक्सप्लाइट हो रही है वो ही सारी बुरी होती है so I was to, I think, get my lesson in that. So when for the first time when these girls were produced before me, so I thought something came in my mind. Because we all are the product of our upbringing. But when I heard their stories, when I heard their stories, so my whole dilemma was communication with communication with them. That was all gone. And I decided that day that I will, one should never be judgmental. There is a judgment, there is a difference between justicing and judging. How many of you know the difference between, and that there lies the answer. How many of, of you know the difference between judging and justicing? How many of you think that both things are one? Judging and justicing. How many people think that both things are one? Normally, when we think that judging means justice. हम जजमेंट लिखते हैं तो हम जस्टिस कर रहे हैं। How many of you think कि जजिंग और जस्टिसिंग एक ही होता है? जजमेंट आगे जस्टिस हो गया। How many of you think like that? No one of you. How many of think you think that there is a difference between judging and justicing? And can one of you please tell me if we can please hand over the mic? Can somebody please enlighten me? कि what do you think? What is the difference between judging and justicing? Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I think justicing is basically that the uh, in judging there can be other pressures which one is feeling, which might go against who has been, uh, who is the victim. But justicing is that uh, the victim is getting the uh, exact remedy that he or she wants, and there is no outside pressure. Basically, uh, we read some cases and we even get uh, in the classroom area that there are some judgments which are not. Um, even the Supreme Court judgments, which are criticized by the law profession, that this is not right, what is happening. The victim is not getting the right judgment or the right uh, justice. So justice is basically without any other pressure, the exact, uh, how do I put it? The exact. I will help you. I will help you. I'll help you. I will help you with this. Please sit. Unfortunately, this is the wrong answer. Because when you say that there is no outside pressure, we bring them to it, then what happened to the outside pressure, then what happened to the judge? Number one. Then if all the things I have to accept the victim, then what happened to the judge? Why did he accept the judge? Then what happened to the judge? Then what happened to the victim? Then what happened to the judge? Then what happened to the judge? So it's a very complex thing. So I will help you. And I can, I'm not saying that this is a definite, final definition. ये मेरी डेफिनेशन है जो 32 साल के एक जज की डेफिनेशन हो सकती है जो मैंने रियलाइज किया। जस्टिसिंग इंक्लूड्स कंपैशन। जस्टिसिंग विल इंक्लूड इंक्लूड सेंसिटिविटी एंड जस्टिस विल आल्सो इंक्लूड व्हाट हैज गोन बिहाइंड द विक्टिम एंड द अक्यूज्ड। सो जस्टिसिंग इज़ दैट एंड व्हाट और कोई अगर किसी ने चेंज नाचिंग की है तो मैंने किसी ने मुझे बोला पुलिस ने बोला इसने चेंज नाचिंग की है तो मैंने बोला हाँ जी ये तो चोर है नो 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 नॉट लाइक दैट सो जजिंग इस बीइंग जजमेंटल ऑल द टाइम एंड जस्टिसिंग इस डूइंग जस्टिस विदाउट बीइंग जजमेंटल नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड 
You cannot become judgmental, make up your mind, looking at people, imposing your own morality, right? And imposing your own, uh, tum sochte ho uske mein. So I think a good judgment and a good judge is who is more justice oriented and not judgmental. That's what my answer to this is. So dilemmas of course hote hai, but dilemmas, if you want to be a good judge, so ab you have to work on that. And you, you know, you asked, when I was doing this OTT judgment, I had to ask myself 200 times. Right? So this dilemma, judges are humans and they do feel, feel these, uh, face these dilemmas. But then you, by your experience and by uh, your reading and being within the law, you come out of it. You come out of it. These are asked for, okay? Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, my question is uh, what and who inspired you to be a judge? Because as I can see, uh, you're not uh, from a law background or from that. So what inspired you to pursue this? And uh, what's the, what's I would say, what's the one thing you would like to tell me to be a successful judge? A key point that you would like to tell. So, uh I am the first one, please sit. I am the first one in my family to uh, pursue law. And I, as I had told you that since I was the first one, I, my father was not very keen that I should do, uh, I should do law at that point of time. And there were reasons for that. And today when my daughter uh, started doing this and she, she goes out and then, of course, law karne mein to koi problem nahi thi. There's some things that come to parents' mind. So if you ask me, I had no one as an inspiration to become a judge. And I will not, just to, ki aap mere liye taliyan bajayen, to mein koi bhi aisa jawaab nahi dungi, jo stereotypes log jawaab dete hain, waisa kuch bhi jawaab nahi dungi, jo sach hoga, wohi bataungi aapko. To mere pas koi aisa inspiration wala koi nahi tha. Maine law is liye kiya, kyunki mein, law karna chahti thi. And because my father gave me this as a last option and he told me that even after doing law, I will not be permitted to practice law. So, I had two options that I went to administrative services or I went here. So, I chose this and God was very kind to me. And I became a judge without practicing ever. So right from my uh, college, I landed in the judge's chair. So I, I think this is uh, God's grace that I uh, became a judge, never regretted it ever. If you will ask me as to what one thing I can tell you to be a good judge, is that you have to write two things One that my father told me when I became a judge, कि जब आप कुर्सी पर बैठो तो आपको कुर्सी पर बैठना चाहिए कुर्सी को आप पर नहीं बैठना चाहिए सो नेवर एवर लेट दिस पावर गो टू योर हेड बिकॉज़ जब आप जज बनते हैं तो आपके पास बहुत सारी पावर आ जाती है और वो पावर बड़ी जल्दी बहुत सारे बार ना सर पे चढ़ जाती है एंड द सेकंड थिंग दैट यू शुड नेवर एवर फॉरगेट इन योर लाइफ इज बीइंग कंपैशनेट कि आपके सामने जब कोई कोई भी आए आपके कोर्ट में जब भी कोई भी आए तो आप सिर्फ एक बात ये जरूर सोचना और ये सिर्फ कोई कहने के लिए बातें नहीं है मैंने इसको प्रैक्टिस किया है कि सपोज इफ मी और एनी ऑफ माय फैमिली मेंबर्स वाज बिफोर दिस तो एक जो हिंदी में हम कहते हैं ना हिंदी बड़ी अच्छी भाषा होती है इसलिए मुझे हिंदी बोलना बहुत अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि हिंदी में तो बिंदी भी मैटर करती है बोलते हैं ना तो हर चीज बैठ करती है वो बिल्कुल दिल को लगती है ना हिंदी तो आपके सामने जब भी कोई आए तो आप इंसान को इंसान समझना कभी मत छोड़ना अगर आप अच्छा जज बनना चाहते हो ऑफ कोर्स आप पढ़ाई करोगे वो सभी करते हैं आप किताबें पढ़ोगे वो तो सभी पढ़ते हैं 
लेकिन आप जब किसी भी इंसान को इंसानियत से आप उसको ट्रीट करोगे तो तब आपकी जजमेंट्स अच्छी आएंगी और जब आप अपनी कंट्री के लिए कम्युनिटी के लिए आप कुछ भी करना चाहोगे वो आपके टेबल पे हमेशा लिखा रहना चाहिए मी माय कंट्री माय कम्युनिटी यू नो दैट यू शुड बी ड्रिवन बाय दैट इफ यू वांट टू बी अ गुड जज गुड आफ्टरनून जस्टिस वर्णकांता First of all, I would really like to say this: that it was indeed fascinating to see that how a judge connected well with the audience. Uh, my question to you, Justice Swarnakanta, is this: that sharenting is a concept wherein parents publicize or publish the certain content which is sensitive in nature about their children on internet platforms. Uh, it is very unfortunate to see also that with the vigor that the parents have. on internet platform they go on to the extent of publishing certain photos of their own children probably their intent might not be in order to outrage the modesty of their own children but they end up like uh, putting or publishing such photos online on on uh, internet platforms due to which uh, i think the privacy of the child is also something that is getting infringed and there are lots and lots of comments of people also uh, that is something which is not sublime in nature are coming into effect so uh, legally speaking how do we deal with such situations right my apology that i would not want to answer this question and i'll tell you why please sit for me as a judge a sitting judge it will be absolutely inappropriate to express my opinion on something which has not been probably challenged before me so to express my opinion on something which is now happening and nobody's challenged I mean, not not before me at least i have not read it i have not heard it it will be inappropriate for me the second point for not answering this question is this that whenever a sitting judge will express its opinion to koi bhi usko opinion keh ke to usko chhapega nahi ye kal uski headline banayenge to mujhe headline to banna hi nahi hai so i would not want to uh answer this question but i can tell this to you that i am very happy that a youngster has actually noted it and he has flagged this issue this issue which needs urgent attention it has come to my notice also but it will be inappropriate for me while holding office to express my opinion on this probably when we will have any interaction you come to my court i can give an answer to you i i certainly would want is it uh, first of all good afternoon ma'am it is a pleasure seeing you here in this campus because i remember last time seeing you in court number 25 i came in 25 yeah yeah i rem i remember coming in january for an interview and i can see lori sir sir i can see uh, anukirat sir and tushar said sir uh my question to you is ma'am uh, you have given a latest judgment on detailed understanding of the religious convergence and its ramifications my question to you is how do you see the impact of ucc uh, uttarakhand has already implemented it and is on the verge of implementation do you think that we need a larger act or a uh, a larger act like this or the acts which are already in existence which are secular in nature such as justice uh, juvenile justice act indian section act the dv act for that matter do we need a smaller legislative acts or we need a bigger uh, act like ucc which governs the entire population because it c comes with certain um, objections that it doesn't touches the uh, i i'm yeah. sorry i'm sorry i'm yeah. interrupting the supreme court is hearing this today okay yeah i know yeah i would want to uh, keep quiet Okay. I will not say. <laughs> Let the Supreme Court give its opinion. Okay. I won't want to really. Okay, but uh, if you could share something uh, like, uh, okay, yeah. I would give that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah uh so 
good evening to the panel um this question might be walking on eggshells but do you think as a judge in the past three decades should judgments be more concise and shortened for people who cannot afford legal aid because there's a lot of people who cannot have lawyers explain the terms uh, the legal lexicon such as obiter and what a ratio is those people cannot understand the judgments and has cannot understand certain laws that are being like foretold by the supreme court or the high court for that matter so do you think after three decades of working in the judiciary should should judgments be a little concise in how the way they are written and published so uh, i think so that people can understand we already have now judgments being translated into hindi and very soon probably we will i think in supreme court already it, it has uh, started you know they concise it and they publish it probably maybe high court is working on that if you will ask me as a judge uh, a judgment every judge writes a judgment and tries to make it to the point but every judgment has to be reasonable it has to give reasons you know to make a judgment short if i don't give sufficient reasons i think people will have more difficulty to understand it so therefore it is important that you know you will have to give facts you will have to give background you will have to give law and then you will have to give your own point of view you will have to give your own reasons because agar main aaj aapko kisi ko saza karne ke liye agar main ye keh dun aap mujhe aisa lagta hai meri ek judgment aap ye dekhiye ki main ye keh dun retweet karna mere mere uh, meri opinion mein retweet karna defamation ke equivalent hai aur main जो जजमेंट मैंने लिखी है तो उन दो जजमेंट्स में से जब आप देखोगे तो आपका फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ये पढ़ के आएगा भाई क्यों बोल रहे हो आप ऐसा ना वाई आर यू सेइंग दैट एंड फॉर दोज हु आर लीगल रिसर्चर्स दोज हु आर स्टूडेंट्स यू नो स्टूडेंट्स तो पूछेंगे ना अपने आप को जब क्लास में पढ़ाएंगी मान्या जी तो आप पूछोगे ना ये जज ने ऐसा क्यों लिखा है सो फॉर दैट यू हैव टू गिव रीजन एंड रीजन इज एक्चुअली द सोल ऑफ अ जजमेंट इफ यू विल नॉट हैव सोल ऑफ द जजमेंट then i don't think there is any sense aap kabhi kisi ko acquitted convicted my opinion this opinion it is not like that you have to give reasons without reasons no judgment has its soul so therefore i think it is difficult to make it uh, more concise than they are we can take one last question if we have okay there the two last questions all right hello ma'am yes ma'am uh, so ma'am i have some concerns regarding the continuous surveillance that is uh, being done by the government on the citizens supposedly uh, out of the top 10 countries which have the highest security camera survey uh, per kilometer india has three cities which are chennai i remember chennai is on first and also the recent dpdp a uh, digital persons data act which gives the government more power to uh, access private data of individuals from the private companies so ma'am i would like your opinion on this uh, since this matter i think partially has already been examined by supreme court partially it has to be examined i do not want to really comment on it this is last question for the evening but yes please go ahead ma'am Uh, thank you 
that it might take over jobs but what do you think that ai and how will ai affect since we don't have too much time so i have published one paper on ai so i will give that manya ji i'll give that uh, uh, that information my entire view on ai has been published in a paper so that i can uh, share that with you you will know all my opinion in that but to sum it up i can just say this as far as i am concerned i would say jo ai hota hai usme artificial hota hai a kya hota hai artificial hota hai please sit artificial hota hai aur jo kuch bhi artificial hota hai wo kabhi bhi justice nahi ho sakta so i would also i i am of the very firm opinion that since justice is real justice has to be real justice has to be community country and people oriented which will involve appreciating their emotions their lifestyles their aspirations and whatever is before you so i think anything artificial cannot take into account everything so i am of very firm opinion that artificial appearance uh, intelligence for writing judgments uh, i don't really am for it and rest i think the on the, in that paper you can please read that i have written a whole paper on that all right then we have we have run out of time is that okay if we continue you can reach out to the uh, guest lecture after to the yeah, after that thank you very much i okay, will take the look second girl who is asking so i'll take her question all right then we go ahead with that um hello justice um my question is very simple if i am to become a lawyer in the future uh, what according to you are the uh, most important skills i should hold as in if i am a student still wondering whether or not i should continue with law what are the um, questions that i should be asking and uh, are the skills that i should be uh, um, uh, what are the Que uh, questions that I should wonder on when I'm making a decision as such. I think this uh, answer has to come from you, not from anyone else. Which year you are in? You are in first year. I think it's too early to start asking you questions. But still, I would suggest this to you, like I said to you earlier, that if you want to decide on as to whether whether you want to be a lawyer who will be standing and uh, arguing a case in a case in a court of law or you want to teach or you want to do something else the best thing to do is to watch the proceedings whenever you have little time please sit in a court of law whichever you want to once you will sit in that in those courts and you will see how people are defending victims how people are without good lawyers i think the answer will come from within you because then you will also know as to what is required from a from a lawyer whether you have that in you and if you still think that you want to be a litigating uh, lawyer then you should be working on your oratory skills that you should be able to communicate in a concise manner how to get the judge to the point i think one can have a whole session on that so maybe uh, in this series of you know this is one series that we have chai and challenges so this is also one challenge probably this new generation has that you know what to do the dilemma of what to do aap logo ne judges ke dilemma ki to baat ki hai magar apne dilemma ki baat nahi kiya aapne ki aap logo ko bhi to kitne sare dilemmas hote hain ye kar le wo kar le isme jaane se kya hoga usme jaane se kya hoga so i think uh, we can have and i another whole session on this on your dilemmas of the new generation which is also a challenge where one can really talk about what a person should be working on now this one's not asked for so i'm sure our student this is yeah i just have one last question because i can use this position because i'm sitting here <laughs> and i get to ask uh, prof uh, just as you use a lot of rigid uh, text in your judgments is there any specific reason for that or any reason that why you rely a lot on it yes i am so happy 
that I will get to answer this because people are thinking, saying things about me as to why I am quoting from religious text. It's not that I have quoted only from one religious text. It is not that I have quoted only from, only from religious texts. My question, a counter question to this can be, that you see, in our judgments, hum log na, uh, we feel so proud. We Latin shabd istamal karte hain. Hum jo British jurisprudence, hum waha se quote karte hain. Hum, uh, I do not want to take one name, jinki hum definitions abhi first year mein padh rahe honge bachche. Jurisprudence mein padh rahe hain. Wo, wo sari hum ratte hain, kyunki hume wo question mein, answer mein poochha jayega. So when we have this unplundered wealth of Indian ancient jurisprudence, why not? Means why should I, as an Indian, only rely on British jurisprudence or keep on looking at Latin maxims or other things? If I have something in my own, uh, own religious texts, if I have something that I can rely on or give a reason and an edifice to my judgment, then why not quote from the religious text? What's wrong with that? I think uh, what is needed from this young generation is this too. And I must make the most of this opportunity that I have today. That you know, aap jo kuch bhi padhte hai na, dusre jurisprudence ka, dusre countries ka, nobody is saying ki wo galat hai. Magar jo galat hai wo ye hai ki aap apna nahi padh rahe. So this is my very small attempt to bring you to that fold and to attract your attention to this. That you know we have our own ancient jurisprudence also. We have our own texts also. And if we have not read it, then we can never answer it. For example, abhi when I quoted from Ramayan, in my... Uh, one of my recent, very recent, I think last week we gave a judgment in which we quoted from Ramayan. So I could quote from Ramayan because I had read Ramayan. And I had to quote from Ramayan because somebody was quoting from Ramayan to tell me there is something wrong somewhere. Then I also have quoted in my last judgment from Kautilya, Arthashastra. There are so many other texts that you should refer to. And I am referring to these texts <coughs> to make this point and to bring you, this is also a challenge. I consider this also a challenge. Ki hum apni bhartiyata ko to bhoolte ja rahe hain. Hum apni Indianness ko bhoolte ja rahe hain. Hum apni Indian heritage ko bhoolte ja rahe hain. To kya lawyers ko nahi jaanni chahiye? Jo log log padh rahe hain, kya woh class apart hain. Unko nahi padhni chahiye. Unko bas British jurisprudence padhna chahiye. Unhe sirf Latin maxims kyo likhne chahiye. Kyo nahi likhne chahiye? Unhe Sanskrit ke bhi likhne chahiye. Unhe Hindi ke bhi likhne chahiye. Unhe sab kuch likhna chahiye. Or aisa ho to ki unme kuch nahi hai. There is so much in that. Ho sakta hai ki aapko thoda din mein aisa lage ki jo Indian nation jurisprudence si, usi sahi kisi ne bahar wale ne kisi ne borrow kiya hua. Or aapko ye aisa lage ga. I promise this to you ki aapko aisa lage ga. So I quoted from there so that the new generation can also <coughs> start, <coughs> I'm sorry, can start quoting from that. That is my reason. That's, that was indeed a very riveting and insightful session. And I'm sure the uh, students enjoyed it as much as we did. Over to you, Professor Arushi. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the insightful session. Uh, I would now like to request Professor Malika Ghalib Shah, Assistant Professor, Jindal Law School, for the word of thanks. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much, Justice Swarna Kanta Sharma, for your insightful lecture. Your illustrious journey with the law of career and as part of the bench has really been insightful for all of us. Your insights into the professional versus personal and how you've taken from the legal scriptures and the ancient scriptures, connecting the past with the present and also shaping the future has not only been insightful for the students sitting here, but through your judgments, you've developed jurisprudence that's been insightful for the entire country. It was an honor to host you at Jindal, 
and we are very grateful that you could make some time out and uh, deliver a session for the young budding minds at Jindal. I would uh, also like to thank the worthy Vice Chancellor, Professor Shri, Dr. Shri S. C. Rajkumar, our worthy Registrar, the Executive Dean, Professor Dr. Sh uh, Shri Professor Manya Pundir, Professor Arushi Bajpai, all the legal represent, all the legal um, researchers associated with the Office of the Worthy, the Honorable Justice, for making this event possible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Malika. I would now like to request Professor S. G. Srijit, Executive Dean, in the Global Law School, to felicitate Ma'am. Before this, I want to say that people are saying that the speaker was very understanding. So I want to say that the speaker was very understanding. This is why you know it was successful. Thank you. I request all the students to be seated. We'll just escort ma'am out, and then you all can go back to your classes. Thank you very much. You've all been very patient. <laughs>